if you think about value from the perspective of the value interpreter, them, not what we think is value, it completely changes the whole way you look at an interaction. Because if you look at an interaction from the standpoint of how are they interpreting the value, what's important to them, everything changes. If I look at it from the value of you guys are going to love what I got and I've got this great stuff, so you come to me, that's a different kind of leadership that's not really very useful. If you think about product of the product with every one of your meetings, what is it people are walking out with? So the product of this workshop is, you know, three hours. Walking out, the product of the product is what you say to somebody when they say, how was it? You know, and you say, it transformed my life. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't... I don't think that's funny at all. <laughs> I think that's very serious. And when you have communication, that's one thing. When you've got connection, that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. The second thing is a concept from Nito Cobain, president of High Point University. It's called the product of the product. This, I think, is very cool. Everybody who you talk to has a product of the product. Uh, so here's how the product of the product works. Uh, let's say I send a Federal Express package from my home outside Chicago to, let's say, uh, Los Angeles. Apparently, it goes to Memphis overnight, and it switches planes, and then they send it to LA. If I send it from my home 35 miles outside Chicago to downtown Chicago, they still send it to Memphis overnight. <laughs> it switches planes, and it comes back to Chicago. My suggestion is put it in a taxi cab and drive it there. <laughs> but that's their switching station. When I hand the driver the package, I never worry about whether it's going to make it. Okay? Because for some reason, Whatever the weather, whatever the stuff, they always get it to L.A. when I need it to. Very interesting. The product is the package. The product of the product is my peace of mind that the package got there. See? Actually, what I'm paying $19.95 for is peace of mind. I'm not, uh, the, the delivery is free. Peace of mind cost me $19.95. Does that make sense? Your conference over the, over the last three days, or for the three days, is, yeah, this is the product. Product of the product is what you walk out with. When somebody says, how was it? What would you learn? What's new? What are you going to do different? That's the product. That's the product of the product. Okay? So when you visit a doc, when you visit a pastor, when you visit people, when you get together at Chamber of Co all that sort of stuff, it's, it's not about our stuff. It's about the memory that they carry with them. That's usually a head-heart memory. And it's a head-heart memory about you as the representative of everything you just talked about. Okay, now I need you in groups of three, but not with anybody that you're in a partnership with now, not with anybody from your table. Everybody up, find a group of three, say goodbye to your partner. Uh, they tell us, speakers, we're supposed to tell you what's important to us so that you'll cooperate more. If you know what's important to me, they say you'll do more stuff that I ask you to do. So what's important to me is volunteering. It's good to be a volunteer if you're in my audience. It's really good to be a volunteer if you're in my audience. So with that in mind, could I have one volunteer from every group stand up now? All right. Good. Good. Get up here. Okay. Good. Now, take a look around the room. These people are called high-risk people. Or they're low on the food chain and they respond to peer pressure real fast. Yeah. Those of you who are standing, would you take your right hand and lightly place it on the shoulder of the person nearest you who's in your group? That person is now your new group leader. <laughs> All right. Try to affirm what you heard that you liked. This is very helpful. You say, you know what I like about what you just said? If you say that, an instant connection starts to happen for people. We tell our undergraduate students at Loyola, we give them an assignment. For the next week, tell people what you liked, learned, or appreciated about them, and use those words, like, learn, or appreciate, to anybody, even the grocery store clerks. You know? And then just watch what happens. They come back the next week, and they are glowing, telling these wonderful stories of the connections they made with their parents and their grandparents and the grocery store clerk. It's really darling. So then the next week, they come back, and I say, how did it go with the like, learn, and appreciate this week? And as good undergraduate students, they say, were we supposed to do it this week, too? <laughs> yes, it's called life. 
always, of course, write a thank you note. So, and write a handwritten thank you note, especially if you're a man, write a handwritten thank you note. Hardly ever happens, but when it happens, it's a big deal. When it lands on their desk the next day, they go, oh, yeah. If it lands on their desk seven days later, who's this? What, what's this? Bertie, who is this person? What is this? See, then it's nothing. I teach uh, my graduate students when they're looking for internships. We have a workshop, and I teach them how to do their resume and all this stuff. These are graduate students, and some of them are from overseas. And um, I said, after you do an interview, I said, before you do the interview, write the thank you note before you walk in. Have the stamp. Have it addressed. Keep it in the car or in your folder. And I said, then as you're leaving, write a couple of lines at the very end to personalize it and mail it immediately so it hits their desk the next day. And uh, they all go, oh, what a good idea. And they're writing. And I said, in fact, you could write me a thank you note today for what I'm doing for you for free. And uh, I said, you could write me a thank you note for this. And I said, that'll be good practice for you. And they go, oh, good idea. I said, but I know that only 10% of you will do it. So I said, that's what's going to make you special. Of course, I have all these people. Uh, one of my, one of my uh, students is, is from India. And he said, Kevin, I'm going to write you a thank you note. And I said, I'm not going to hold my breath. So uh, six weeks later, I saw him in the stairwell. Kevin, I'm going to be writing you that thank you note today. You know, <laughs> Don't bother. So. Uh, <laughs> But the ones who do, I know, I remember, I keep it in the folder, I treasure it. So write thank you notes a lot. One of my friends, her whole success is based on writing 10 thank you notes a day by 6 p.m. And she writes them to people she just met and to people she's thinking about. People love her. Now, that's how many contacts a week? You know, 10 times what, 5? 50. She can even take two days off with that. You know? <laughs> how many times has she touched somebody? Uh, thank you note is very interesting to see what happens if you do that. Uh, you create a memory for somebody. It's also important to recognize your strengths, which is what you just did with your partners. It was interesting to watch people's expressions. It's interesting to watch the expressions of people when they start talking about themselves. Some it's kind of hard, but then when they get it out and people go, yeah, that's kind of cool, and they go, that is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> always remind yourself of what you did well. Always remind yourself of what you did well, even when things don't go so well. Remind yourself of what you did well. I, I didn't run away and cry. Yeah, that's good. You know. <laughs> Always remind yourself that because that's going to arm you for the next time. And you can't. Oh, you know, not everybody listens in exactly the same way. Not everybody is going to receive us in the same way. What they do receive is enthusiasm. What they do receive is connection. What they do receive is a sense of the heart. When that happens, big things happen. My wife, when our first child was born, uh, had not met my wife's ob before towards the, you know, like the eighth month or something for some reason. And uh, all of a sudden, he's up on the table with her. She's sitting at the table. Her legs are kind of down. He's up on the table. And he's rubbing her back and, and rubbing her uh, tummy. And he's saying, isn't she just the best? He's going on and on. And afterwards, I said, boy, that guy's pretty cool. She said, yeah, you know what he used to do before he became an obstetrician? I said, no, what? She said, he was a veterinarian. <laughs> this all made sense to me then. So, OK, that's cool, you know. And uh, now, wouldn't that be interesting for you to know that piece of information? So, you know, 